didn't know your Bible and read it before you left the house. Amen. You'll talk to God like God talked to you. You'll be fit to meet people. Amen. Amen. And uh, somebody won't say to you, did you wake up grumpy? You won't have to say to him, that smart aleck, no, I left him at home in bed. <laughs> John chapter 7. Have you got it? Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Got your Christmas message early today. John chapter 7. Would you stand with me, please? We're going to just read in this chapter from verse 37 through verse 43. Just seven verses inclusively. John 7. Aren't you glad you're in church? Amen. Yeah. 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 That's the kind of singing you ought to have in church. Yes, Lord. This is the kind of book you ought to have in church. Right? Amen. Right. Nobody ought to doubt or wonder what kind of book you got. Amen. You go to a good church. Oh, we don't bring the National Geographic. That's right. We don't use the National Geographic and we don't use the New International Version. Amen. 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 And the reason why we use this one, the King James, is because we believe. Amen. Right. Not just because we like it. I believe. That's right. John chapter 7, verse 37 says, in the last day, that great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried, saying, If any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. He that believeth on me, as the Scripture hath said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. But this spake he of the Spirit, which they that believe on him should receive, it's talking about the future, for the Holy Ghost was not yet given because of Jesus was not yet glorified. Now, folks, you need to realize this before we keep reading. You need to realize that some of the things that Jesus said, particularly in the Gospel of John, were things that would not go into effect until after he died on the cross. Right. When he says that, that uh, he that believeth on me, as the Scripture has said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water, that didn't happen while he was ministering on the earth. If you read the next verse, it happened after Jesus Christ died on the cross and the Holy Ghost was sent. Verse 40. That's a real eye-opener for some people. Verse 40. Many of the people, therefore, when they heard the saying, said, Of a truth, this is the prophet. That's a reference to Deuteronomy chapter 18, where the Lord promised that he would raise up a prophet like unto Moses. People asked about it, wondered who that was. It was Jesus. Amen. Others said, This is the Christ. But some said, Shall Christ come out of Galilee? Have not the Scripture said that Christ cometh of the seed of David and out of the town of Bethlehem, where David was? So there was a division among the people because of him. Now, Paul's our Scripture reading. Verse 42 will be our text with emphasis on the words, Christ cometh. Verse 42 says, Has not the Scripture said that Christ cometh out of, this, of the seed of David and out of the town of Bethlehem where David was? Would you bow your heads and hearts together with me in prayer? <coughs> oh, Holy Father, may the Holy Spirit work in me and work in those who are in these pews during the preaching of your word. Father, have mercy upon your people. It's no wonder that the United States of America is in such a mess yeah. because your people are in such a mess. Yeah. Starting out their days without prayer, without reading the Bible, not opening their mouth hardly about Jesus during the day. Father, forgive us. Cleanse us. Lord, I pray that you would use this church and this church service to stir saved people to be what we ought to be. And if there's anyone in our midst this morning that never trusted Jesus Christ as Savior, may they be stripped of their self-righteousness to where they might see themselves naked, sinful, alone, without God and without hope, headed for a devil's hell, and flee from the wrath to come into the arms of the Lord Jesus Christ who stretched them out in dying for our sins according to the Scriptures, being buried and rising again the third day according to the Scriptures. And we'll give you praise for what you do. In Jesus' name we ask these things. 
Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Go ahead and give you the title for the morning's message. <clears throat> Jesus Christ has already come to town. I want to tell you something. I admit to being jealous. I am jealous for my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I don't like for a holiday to be named after him, like Christmas is, and to have some mythical figure named Santa Claus to be given undue attention. This is a church. We ought to preach the truth. And the truth is, Santa Claus is fiction. That's right. Jesus Christ is fact. Amen. Santa Claus is a lie. Yeah. Jesus Christ is truth. Amen. He's not only truth, he's the truth. Yeah. One of the maddest I've ever seen, a member of a local church here in this town, happened years ago when I told him that it's not right for parents to lie to their kids and tell them that somebody exists that doesn't. I say that to you today, and if you tell your kids there's a Santa Claus when he's not, uh, you'll be ashamed of yourself for lying. Right. You'll wonder why that they would believe later that, uh, that there's no such thing as Jesus when you lie to them about some other fella who knows what you're doing, yeah. knows whether you've been naughty or nice, going to come at any time, maybe when you're asleep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He's going to bring his reward with him. He comes from the north, and he's dressed in red. Folks, if you wonder why the people don't believe about Jesus, one of the reasons is, is moms and dads didn't tell the truth about other things. That's right. Now, traditional song at Christmas, I know this is making me popular with some of you about like the fellow that, uh, in trying to advertise his store, put Santa Claus up on the helicopter. It wasn't a real Santa Claus, it, you know, man. It was, a, it was a mannequin. And Santa Claus was going to parachute out of this helicopter and he was coming down with a bag of goodies. And they miscalculated, they get, didn't get the cord pulled. And so there's a big crowd down there at the parking lot below, and this mannequin comes down to the bank and smash and breaks up into a million pieces. Can you imagine the kids watching Santa Claus go boom? And needless to say, the company wasn't very popular. And with you, some of you may not be that popular. I'll tell you the truth whether you like it or not. Amen. Amen. And anything that tries to take attention from Jesus Christ and is named after Jesus Christ uh, is an idol. <coughs> and it needs to be kicked over. I just did. Now, there are a lot of people dressed up as Santa Claus. And by the way, I don't have a hang up about this. I'm not going to do anything. You may see me on visitation dressed up as Santa Claus. <laughs> I might preach on the street corner dressed up as Santa Claus. I got no no uh, superstitions about it or anything like that. People say, well, Santa Claus has got some eerie superstitious things about it. I'm not scared of no Santa Claus. I'm not scared of talking about Santa Claus. If you've got a Santa Claus in your uh, front yard, I'm not going to avoid your house. Okay? Santa Claus don't bother me none. I'm just telling you the truth, okay? And Jesus Christ is the one that ought to be emphasized. The point of the message as I get into it is not to attack Santa Claus. Yeah. I've already done enough of that to where you think I've shot up my 357 at. Yeah. But what I want to do is to show you that in contrast to the song that says Santa Claus is coming to town is the truth that Jesus Christ has come to town. Yeah. And Jesus came to the town of Bethlehem and his coming was the most important event of Earth's history. Yeah. The most important thing that has happened on this planet was for Jesus Christ to come 2,000 years ago. And so if you'll bear with me, now that I've upset some of you about Santa, I will tell you some things about this man who really did come to town. Amen. And his name is Jesus. Amen. And some people think he's a myth, but he's real. Amen. Some people think it's a fable, but it's real. Amen. Some people think that he wasn't virgin born. Some people think that Mary was not a virgin. Some people think that she was, quote, knocked up by a German soldier, um, a Roman soldier. 
And I tell you that Jesus Christ is the real virgin born, Son of God, eternal, almighty, King of kings, Lord of lords. He's my personal Savior. And I take issue with anybody who tries to rob his glory. Amen. That's right. That includes preachers. Amen. That includes fictitious <laughs> characters at this time of the year. And talking to you about the one who has come to town, first thing I want to say about him is his cradle was the vehicle by which he came. Amen. If you want to know how Jesus showed up, he showed up by way of the cradle. Amen. In Luke 2, 7, the Bible says of Mary, she brought forth the firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. Amen. Frankly, it's sad that there's a lot of people who won't live, give room for Jesus. A lot of churches won't give room for Jesus. Talk about everything else except Jesus Christ. Right. A lot of people don't have room for Jesus in their in their wallets. That's right. Amen. 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 Boy, I just feel I can just feel a good movement of God going Amen. on. Amen. A lot of people have a hard time giving Jesus first place in their money. They got no room in the wallet for Jesus. Some people have no room in their schedule for Jesus. Somebody was talking to me this morning about how that you really got to love something to, to do certain things. I uh, I won't tell you who it is, but his initials is Junior Kite. <laughs> and he was talking about how to go up to Illinois and, and go hunting and leave around 3 o'clock in the morning and go to weather that's anywhere between 25 and 35 degrees and go sit out there for 12 hours waiting for a deer to come by. And then that evil man shoot bandits. Yeah. <laughs> but you know, if somebody really wants to do something, they make an effort That's right. uh, to do it. There's a lot of people, they got no room in their schedule for Jesus Christ. And I said, oh, I just can't get there. You know why you can't get there? You don't want to. That's right. If you really wanted to, you'd go somewhere. And we generally do. There are places we don't make it to, but if we really want to go there, we plan. <coughs> we'll put it on our calendar. We'll ask off for work. We'll ask permission of our wives. Or whatever is required to be able to go and do it. This was a great event, even though that many people paid no attention to it. It was the greatest event of all history. And Jesus Christ came into this world as, a, as an event of humility. God became man. Jesus Christ laid uh, uh, aside the form of God and took upon himself the form of man. He became in the form of a servant and was born here in this world as the man Christ Jesus as a baby. Now this was an event of God being willing to become man so that you and I could be saved. What a blessing. It was a, a humiliating event and it was a holy event. One of the songs that we sing at this time of year is Silent Night, Holy Night. Amen. Amen. You know what's one of the things that I dislike about the Christmas season is all of the wickedness that goes on in the Christmas season. Amen. Amen. Yeah. If you're going to honor Jesus Christ, then you should honor Him by holiness. Amen. Not by going out and getting drunk. Amen. Not by going to an office party and committing fornication. Amen. Not by getting so smashed that you're telling a bunch of filthy jokes and don't remember where you were the next day. Amen. It should be a holy time if you're going to emphasize Jesus Christ and His birth. The angel said to the woman, The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore, that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. Amen. Saying it was a holy thing. It's a holy event. When Jesus Christ came. His cradle was the vehicle by which he came. The second thing I will mention about him coming to town is his claims that he made were extraordinary. Jesus said things about himself that drove people crazy. He said in one place, The men of Nineveh shall rise in judgment with this generation and shall condemn it because they repented at the preaching of Jonas and behold, a greater than Jonas is here. He was speaking of himself. He said, The queen of the south shall rise up in the judgment with this generation and shall condemn it, for she came from the innermost part of the earth to hear the wisdom of Solomon. And behold, 
a greater than Solomon is here. Amen. People knew what Jesus was talking about. Somebody said, Are thou greater than our father Abraham? And Jesus said, Before Abraham was, I am. I say that his claims were extraordinary. Santa supposedly comes from the North Pole. Jesus came from heaven. Amen. Not only was his claims extraordinary about the place from which he came, but the perception that he had. The song claims for Santa that he knows whether you're asleep or awake, and he knows if you've been good or bad. So be good for goodness sake. I'm telling you that Jesus is the only one who knows everything. Amen. He's the only one who knows everything about you. He Amen. knows the good and the bad. Amen. Jesus, and his claims were extraordinary. His claims were extraordinary as to his power. He said, but that you may know that the Son of Man hath power on earth to forgive sins. And he saith unto the lame man, arise, take up thy bed, and walk. He that was laying picked up his bed and walked. Amen. Why? Because Jesus let everybody know that he had power like no man had ever had. Amen. Jesus could cleanse a man from leprosy. He could cause the deaf to hear, cause the blind to see, and cause the lame to walk. Amen. He cast out devils by his word. He raised the dead. And in time of stormy sea, he said, Peace, be still. And the wind came to a halt. Amen. And the sea had its waves laid out at the feet of the master of the sea. Who said to his disciples as he got ready to leave this world, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. His claims were extraordinary. His cradle was how he came. Third, his cross was the tree that's associated with his cup. Someone says, Preacher, where's the Christmas tree? The Christmas tree of the believer is the cross of Christ. Amen. 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 That's the tree that the Christian pays attention to. The Bible says, But God forbid that I should glory save in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom the world is crucified unto me, and I unto the world. Galatians chapter 6, verse 14. That's my tree, my friend. Is the crucifixion tree. Who his own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree. 1 Peter chapter 2 verse 24 says. And guess what is on that tree? A star. Amen. The bright and morning star. The fairest of 10,000 to my soul. <laughs> Jesus Christ. King of kings and Lord of lords. And the tree that's associated with his coming to this world builds attention because of its light. Mm -hmm. People enjoy looking at light. Mm -hmm. I enjoy the wintertime because the stars appear brighter than seen. Mm -hmm. I usually try to get up a group of people, anybody to go with me during the Christmas season. And I like to go look at lights. I don't care if I never grow up. I can enjoy looking at lights. Just drive around town. You tell me where some good lights are to look at. I'll go and drive once a year and, and look at them. But I thank God that sweetly the light has shined upon me. Once I was blind, but now I can see the light of the world is Jesus. Amen. The cross bears a star. The cross builds attention with a light brighter than any Christmas tree you've ever seen. And the cross brings gladness because of what is hanging on. People enjoy decking their tree and, and putting things on it to make it look pretty and they it brings a joy to their heart as they see these pretty ornaments around their tree in their living room. I want you to know what makes the cross beautiful to me is not the cross itself. The cross was a place of a curse. The cross was a place of a crucifixion and a, a death. But hallelujah, what makes the cross sweet is Jesus Christ Amen. hanging on the cross. Yes. My dear friend, when we talk about glory and the cross, we're not talking about the wood. 
That's what the Catholics do. We are talking about the one who hang on the cross. Amen. The one who hung on the cross is Jesus Christ. Amen. Then as I think about why Jesus Christ came into this world, his cause was to reach sinners. His cradle was the vehicle of his coming. His claims were extraordinary claims. His cross was the tree that was associated with him being here. And his cause was to reach sinners. Right. Jesus Christ was born in that manger 2,000 years ago, not only to one day be king, and he will be, but he came and was born in that manger to grow up and be the man, Christ Jesus, Amen. to save you and me. Amen. This is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptation, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, Amen. of whom I am chief. Yes. Joy to the world, the Lord is come. You know why he came? He came to save you. Amen. He came to save me. Thank God we who are saved have got the best gift at Christmas that anybody could get. Amen. Eternal life. Yes, Lord. If you don't have money, if you don't have gifts that you'd like to give to other people, if you get depressed thinking about gift giving and all, listen, if you're saved, you've got the greatest gift that could ever be given. That's right. Amen. A home in heaven. Yes, Lord. God Almighty in your heart. Yep. Everlasting you. life. So many benefits. Amen. Satan is coming to reward good people, according to the song. And I understand that Jesus Christ is going to come and his rewards with him. But when Jesus Christ came the first time, he didn't come to reward good people. That's right. He came to save bad people. Amen. He came to give pardon to bad people. Yep. He came to give forgiveness to sinners. He came to give eternal life to people not who are nice, but who are naughty. That's right. Not who are good, but who are bad. Amen. Jesus saw that everybody was a sinner. Sacrificed himself on the cross of Calvary, dying for them, being buried, rising again, shedding his blood on the cross to buy them salvation, and then offered salvation, offers eternal life as a gift to anybody who will receive it. Amen. There's nobody in here that Jesus doesn't want to save. God loves you. Jesus died for you. I don't care how you've lived in time past. I don't care who you're related to. I don't care what your background is if we were to check up on it with the police. Yeah. Jesus loves you. Jesus died for you. <laughs> Jesus wants to save you and make you into something wonderful and beautiful. Amen. I got a word to say about Santa's elves. Uh oh. The last thing I want to say is, is the Lord's children are his representatives who get to assist him. That's right. The mythical Santa is assisted by elves. The Lord Jesus Christ is assisted by Christians. Amen. Just little people. Yep. The Bible says, my little children, these things are right unto you that you sin not. We're Amen. just little people. Yep. Privileged to be laborers with a great big God. Amen. Amen. The Bible says, for we are laborers together with God. In 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 9. And thinking about you and me being the Lord's helpers, our task is this. Get this message out to other people. This message is called the gospel. Amen. And the great mission of our church is to get the gospel out to people so that they can be saved. Amen. Once they get saved, we're to teach them to do what God would have them to do. Amen. Our tools are many and better. Thank God, in the day in which you and I live, we have printed tools, tracts, New Testaments, follow-up literature, helpful literature. I gave out literature this morning. In addition to printed tools, we've got cars, buses, vans. We've got people in this church that you are reached for Christ because of somebody's vehicle. <laughs> Because of a bus ministry, perhaps. We've got telephones, letters, billboards, the internet, posters, radio, newspaper, and all of these things. 
as tools that God has given us Amen. to help Jesus in getting this message out yes, of why He came into this world. People drive around Jacksonville during this time of the year and they see these nativity scenes. And they do not know why that babe came in the manger. They hear the song, Christ the Savior is born. But most of them don't really realize what that Savior did. He paid for every one of their sins with His blood on the cross of Calvary. We do have a training place for these elves and a testing laboratory. It's called the local church. Yeah. Amen. Amen. This is where saved people get their training to do the test. Yeah. And if you're not a part of a local church and you're saved, you're out of the will of God. Yeah. You ought to get in one, and you ought to get in one that believes that this is their task, and you ought to participate in it, and you ought to get this message out to people. Take some work. I believe 99% of what God blesses in a church is not so much just us believing and praying, but us doing what God told us to do. You believe, you pray, and don't obey God, and don't do what God told you to do, you don't see nothing happen. That's right. Faith without works is dead. What that means is it doesn't produce a thing. Amen. God doesn't intend for anybody to just pray and believe as far as your Christian service goes, and as far as our mission goes. You get saved by grace through faith, plus nothing, minus nothing. Once you're saved, you're supposed to work. You're created in Christ Jesus unto good works. I'm saying our technique at Glenwood Baptist Church is primarily doing what God told us to do. Amen. The main thing He told us to do is go. Yes. Go in all the work. Our technique is a transformed life. We were talking about it in our class in Sunday school this morning. People will pay more attention to you if they've seen a change in your life. Yeah. One of our tools is traveling, knocking on doors. <coughs> our main tool is telling, telling people the good news. And a secret tool is tears. That is, when we talk to people, we do it not because the preacher browbeat us, not because it's a requirement, but we do it because we can. Amen. God help us to care. Yes, Junior, you got saved because somebody cared. Amen. Faith got saved because somebody cared. Right. If you're here visiting with us, I want you to know there's people in this church who care for your soul. Amen. And if you're saved, they care for your soul to grow in the Lord. Would you stand with me, please? We're going to have an invitation.